something that I talked to you guys about a few months ago, so maybe kind of around May, June time, um, and that's calf strains. Okay, so what I'm not going to do today is give me a little bit more of a comprehensive approach into how you can help fix calf strains. Okay, so when we look at the calf muscle, there's two parts, alright? So you've got a big muscle here, the one you can see your gastrocnemius, and then you've got your soleus underneath and slightly below that, and then there's a few more layers, the posterior tibialis, and then you've got your lateral layer there, which are your pronial muscles, and they all kind of play a role in helping you absorb impact as your foot hits the floor, and then when your foot's at the back foot, helping you drive off to create that swing phase and a nice efficient gait. So we're going to look at kind of what each part of the calf does and give you some ideas and dynamic exercises. Now the key word there is dynamic, okay? Because when we're looking at running, it is very, very dynamic. Constant motion, we're only in one position for around one tenth to four tenths of a second. All right, so bam, gone. All right, so really, really fast. So kind of static stretching here, it's pretty much as useful as a chocolate teapot. All right, it's not going to help us at all. So what I'm going to do with this as well, um, I did a, a foam rolling video a while back, and we're going to link this to the foam rolling, and hopefully we're going to give you like a dual, kind of like a dual strategy where we can kind of get into the calves, get those niggly bits with a foam roller or even a tennis ball, doesn't have to be anything posh, and then attack it with what really makes a difference long term and that's good dynamic movement. Alright, so I hope you enjoy the video and again let us know how you get on with all the exercises that we're about to show you and I'll see you again next time. Okay, we're going to start you off on a bit of a strength exercise, alright, for our soleus and our post hip muscle as well. Um, what we do, we need to step and then ideally have something to hold on to, whether it be a wall or banister, anything. So you can do this on the stairs at home, okay? And all we're going to do, we're going to reach down and we're going to reach over with the other foot. So you're going to turn it out, reach over. So my right foot's pointing now to the right. And I'm going to get a good bend for this left leg. So I'm going to point my right foot out to the right, bend my knee, and then I'm going to come up onto the toe of my left leg. I'm going to reach out again, come up onto the toe. I'm going to let my heel drop below the height of the box or step. So I'm adding my extra bit of rotation, driving a little bit of internal rotation through our tibia to help us load our soleus and our post tibia a little more effectively. So I'll show you on the other leg. So we're going to point my left foot left this time, bending my knee, and I'm going to come up onto my tiptoes, straighten my leg. Good. So that's going to help give us a dynamic stretch into our soleus and post tip, and it's also going to help build strength in there as well. So try that one, and let us know how you get on. Okay, so we're going to stay with the post tip and soleus again, alright? So we'll lower muscles and our landing muscles, okay? So when our foot hits the floor, they're the one that slow down knee flexion and ankle flexion to drive us a bit more upright and provide power, alright? So we're going to look at those again. So what we're going to do now is we're going to stand on our left leg and we're going to heel touch the three positions on the floor. So we're going to go, if I imagine 12 is straight in front of me, we're going to go to 11, then to 12, then to 1. I'm going to very, very lightly touch with my right heel. Okay, so I'm going to go over to 11, come back to 12, then to 1. So it's 11, 12, 1. 11, 12. One. Okay, so this is a balance reach exercise, so works a bit of core, works a bit of balance as well. So we go 11, 12, and 1 on the other leg, 11, 12, and 1, last time through, 11, 12, and 1. Okay, so give that a call for me, and again, let us know how you get on. Okay, so the next one, we're going to use a wall, and we're going to look again into our big gastrocnemius muscle, now the one at the top. And all we're going to do, we're going to put our foot back, okay, and we're going to just step into the motion, driving our heel to the floor. Okay, so we're going to reach.
reach back, really drive our heel down into the ground so you feel a stretch right up the back. Keep your knee straight right up into the calf muscle. Okay, you're just going to keep trying to push back further and further all the time. And then we're going to just take it slightly to the opposite side. Try and keep your feet pointing forward. I'm just going to change the stretch a little bit, hit a few different fibers. And then all we need to do is take it out wide and to the same side. Alright, again, focus on really pushing that heel down into the ground. Okay, so that's going to be our dynamic step back stretch. Hit that gastrocnemius muscle. Working on dynamic flexibility. Okay, so we're going to introduce the box again on the step for this one. And it's very subtle, alright? It's a very subtle difference to the first exercise. On this one, we're going to be doing more of a calf stretch. So we're going to keep our knee straight. At no point is our knee going to flex at this point, alright? We're going to keep our knee nice and straight so we really target in on our big gastrocnemius muscle. And all we're going to do is just a little single leg up and down, keeping our legs straight. And we're going to look at improving how we push off from our back leg into our swing phase. Okay, so you see at no point am I bending my knee, my knee stays nice and extended, and I'm driving up nice and fast onto my toe. Let my heel drop below the height of the box, really working on getting that into that calf stretch. Okay, so there's four exercises for you. Two to target the gastrocnemius muscle, two to target our landing muscles, our soleus and our post tib. Give those a go and again let us know how you get on and I'll put the link to the foam rolling video into the article so you'll have that ready available for you as well and you can kind of combine the two strategies. Alright, so it works best, foam rolling first, just spend a couple of minutes getting into the naughty bit of your calves and then you go up and you attack them with movement. Alright, so foam rolling on its own, for me, it's not a very effective treatment. You have to teach the muscles, the tendons and your nervous system to cope with the demands of running. And these dynamic lengthening come strengthening exercises are a really good way to do that, to help you prevent injury and keep you on track with your consistent trainings. Because race season's coming up and the last thing we need is a persistent calf niggle derailing our training plans. So please give these a go guys and as always, kind of let us know how you get on and good luck.